built to serve. Back here on First Things First, Colts linebacker Darius Leonard just wrapped up his second year in the league with his first Pro Bowl appearance. This a season after becoming an All-Pro in his rookie year, and we are lucky enough to be joined by Darius here. Thank you so much for stopping in. No problem. Thanks for having me. How, how has this happened? I'm like, you redshirted your first year at South Carolina State, a MEAC school, mm -hmm. right? How do you go from a redshirt freshman to becoming an All-Pro and a Pro Bowler in your first two years in the NFL? Um, you know, it just... Um, coming out of high school, I mean, I wasn't heavy, heavily recruited. Um, everybody doubted me coming out, saying I wasn't big enough to play linebacker. So went to South Carolina State, um, red shirt. I went in probably around 180. And so you're 180, doubted. you're 180 when you get to school? Yes, sir. Because I, I was playing a receiver as well. So I didn't know what position I was going to play. And then I, they moved me to linebacker. And then everybody said he was too small. He's not big enough. He's not fast enough. So I wanted to prove them wrong. And then after that, I get drafted, they say I was the worst draft pick, and I wanted to prove them wrong, and, you know, I just I always have that chip on my shoulder. Well, now, you come off, like, very mild-mannered and all that, but you talked about the chip on your shoulder. Pro, pro Football Focus ranked you the 100th best player in the NFL, and you, you're not happy about that. Oh, no, I mean, no, <laughs> I'm, I'm not, but um, it's just like, you know, the worst draft pick, you know, you take that and you use it as fuel, um, and I'm gonna continue to do that because, um, you know, I'm a competitor, and to be ranked 100 out of 101, that's that's you know that's something that I don't live for. I want to be at the top of the list, and I got to continue to strive to do that. Right. Why do you think that happened? Why? Like, how could they rank you that low? As Doug said, you were pro, or all pro your first year and pro bowler this year. That's that's a good question. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure. Um, I would love to have a conversation to kind of figure out what's the what's the rating, like what, what adds it up, and, and see exactly what's going on. Um, I thought uh, this year, um, I think I played well coming off, coming off my first year, and um, I'm not sure what made me to be 100 out of 101. <laughs> All right, we're showing the highlights of you taking Jameis Winston's picks, uh, pick six off Jameis Winston in the house. Now, in fairness, it's Jameis Winston. A lot of people took his pick oh, six. Oh, come the house. on. Don't, <laughs> don't do that. I know going into the game, you guys are lining up going like, all right, who's going to get one? Everybody's going to get one, right? He's, Your he's, first he's, NFL pick. He's a little, but he's a little like Oprah Winfrey, like, and you get intercepted. Still, okay? <laughs> You had to have like flashbacks to your wide receiver days, right? You catch the ball, you high pointed the ball too. You're backpedaling, catch it, take it to the house. What, what's that memory like? Um, it was it was crazy because right right before the game, uh, Davis Corey had come up. He he knew that we was gonna call this blitz, and he knew that you know if he get a three by one backside, he's gonna run a slant. And in, if I engage long enough with the center, he's not gonna see me drop out. And as soon as I saw it, you know, like you said, the receiver day came out and. High point of the ball and kind of took it to the house from there. You are the only linebacker in the NFL with five interceptions last season. Do you think you should have won Defensive Player of the Year? I don't think I should have won Defensive Player of the Year, but I think my name should have at least been a nominee. I, I think um, Stephon Gilmore did a great job this year, um, shutting down top receivers week in and week out. Um, so I definitely, I definitely think that he deserved it, but I do think that I deserve to kind of be in the conversation as well. It's kind of interesting. Jacoby was a starter, and I think Jacoby impressed a lot of people. But the, the organization, and Chris Ballard, your GM, he, he didn't put, like, the full weight of support behind him at the end of the year. What, what's your sense of what's going to happen on the offensive side of things? Um, I, I think we're going we're gonna to stick with Jacoby. Um, I think Jacoby is a great quarterback. Um, I think he was 5-2 and two before before his knee injury, and I do think that, that Mike could have... Um, had a toll on his play, but you know, he he's been great for us, and I think we're going. He he was he's going to continue to be great, and we're going to stay behind him no matter what. Now, Melvin Gordon said that he thinks Philip Rivers is going to you guys. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I, I saw that, but like like I said with Jacoby, he's he's our starting quarterback, and you know we we're going to stay behind him and just let the chips fall where they fall at. Um, How shocking was it for you guys when Andrew Luck suddenly retired? It was very shocking. Um, we we found out mid preseason game. Uh, so I mean, it was it's definitely it was shocking, and you know I didn't I didn't see it coming. Um, you know, Andrew is a great great guy, great player, and you know we we stood behind his decision because you know we see what his body has has been through, and once once your body says okay, I can't go anymore, you you really can't go anymore. Oh, you mentioned it was a great question. You mentioned it was it was like fourth quarter of the the preseason game that he was supposed oh, yeah. to play in, right? Right. So were you were you dressed? Were you playing? Um, I wasn't playing, no. Okay, so you're on the sideline. I'm on the sideline. Okay, and then it, it but it, it broke like on Twitter before he oh, got yeah. a chance to announce yeah, it. Uh, yeah. So did you, know, like, you're standing on the sideline and guys like, hey, Andrew Luck's retiring? Like, how did it actually go down? Oh, well, at first it was the fans. 
they like, started they, they right? went, No, no, they went screaming first, like, Andrew, don't leave. We love you. So everybody looking like, what is what's going on? And then that's when word came around on the sideline, hey, Andrew's about to retire. So we were like, wait, that can't be true. So did you go walk up to him? Wow. No, because I didn't believe it. So I wasn't going, you know, walk up to him and say, hey, Andrew, are you about to retire? So I was like, no, <laughs> watching, you know, it was a preseason game, and it was the last preseason game, so we had some – in the linebacker room, we got a lot of rookies who was playing, so, you know, I wanted to watch them, so I, I wasn't even focused on that. And then towards the end of the quarter, they was like, okay, yes, it's true. And then as he was walking off, I mean, the worst thing that could possibly happen for someone who's been playing and giving the city their all the boom his last time walking out of, the, uh, out of that stadium. What was it like when he told the team? I mean, it was and what you yeah in that in that room. It was it was hurtful. I mean, everybody everybody was hurt. You know, um, you could just see the look on his face that he didn't want to do it, but you know his body was telling him to do it. I mean, you know, me at first when I first heard it, selfishly I was upset because you know he's a great player and you dream of you know having that great quarterback and especially seeing how well he played off of. Uh, his first year coming back off his injury. So, you know, we had high aspir aspirations for him. And, you know, I was upset at first. And then, you know what, I went home and I really thought about it and saw and remember all the stuff he put his body through. And now he's married, he has a kid, and that's what he's looking for, forward to spending <laughs> his life with. So um, we stood behind him from there. Was there a feeling in the locker room that the season was over before it no, even started? Not at all. Because um, Jacoby was getting... When we started OTAs back in April, Jacoby was getting all the first team reps. So Andrew was never in there. So when he announced his retirement, it was like, okay, well, we're glad that Jacoby was getting all the first team reps. And, you know, we trust him and his leadership role just can't, got, it, got, it, got it even bigger. So when you hear names like Phillip Rivers, you hear, and you hear you know, the postseason press conference where Chris Ballard wasn't quite set on the, and knowing what Jacoby was able to do in terms of stabilizing things, how does that set with you? Um, um, I definitely think that Jacoby <laughs> could, could help us win, and he shows that he showed it early uh, last year. And um, you know, we always said defensively, if the other team doesn't score, they can't win. So I put all the pressure on me instead of Jacoby because if the other team can't put up points, and if our offense just give me three points, we win the ball game. And they say defense win championships. All right, here's the question that I want to know in that division. <clears throat> How do you tackle Derrick Henry? That does not seem like <laughs> it's, it's, it's very tough. Um, I mean, I'll... Maybe, like, you're 6'2", to, to what? About to 18, 220. Okay, so he outweighs you by... by 30 pounds. By 30 probably. pounds, yeah. and he's, what, maybe an inch taller than yes, you? Yes, sir. So, I mean, that's a freight train. Oh, yeah, I, I always tell him he's a DN player on the running back. That's what he reminds me of. And, <laughs> you know, every time we play him, we got to say seven plus to the ball. That's the only way we're going to get him down because he's... He's so much of a powerful runner. He's a fast runner, and, you know, he got a nasty stiff arm. So you don't know how to really tackle him. So he's in space. You don't know exactly what move he's going to hit you with. So we always say first man, you know, you hold on, and other guys get to the ball. As a defensive player, what other quarterbacks in the league do you get the most hyped up to go against? Um, Drew Brees, um, Patrick Mahomes, Deshaun Watson, um, and Tom Brady, uh, you know, those those are the top guys in the league right now. And, you know, to to be the best, you got to go out and go beat the best. And, you know, I went I witnessed firsthand with Drew Brees um, how well how well he can he can play. And, you know, that shows me that I'm nowhere near where I wanted to be just to, you know, seeing the things and seeing how he was dissecting the defense. Now, they call you the maniac, which it's you sitting here, it doesn't seem <laughs> like it doesn't fit. It doesn't fit. But you why, where'd you get that with? nickname? Yeah. Um, I got a nickname my junior year in college. You know, playing against Clemson, uh, had 19 tackles. And coming off, um, got back on campus, somebody said, you play like a straight maniac. And once they said it, it kind of... You know, kind of, kind of stuck with it, and you know, I got that persona where when I'm on the field, I'm a different guy. You know, I'm screaming, having a good time, and that's when my competitive nature comes in. I want to make every single play, and I, I just feel like I, I don't want to be touched. You know, if the ball's 30, 40 yards down the field, I want to be there to make that play. You said 218 pounds. That's small for a lineman. Mm -hmm. Did they ever try to move you to safety, or did you ever consider that? Oh, um, my, my first year. My first year ever playing football, I started started at safety. That was my first position. Then I moved to linebacker, and then, like I said, I was I was playing receiver and linebacker, and I got recruited as a receiver and linebacker. So I never I never played safety, but you know now in my scheme of things, where we do at uh, with the Colts, you know sometimes where they can line me up at corner, look like man to man, but we're playing something else. So they trust me enough to kind of do do them uh, other things.
It's pretty fun. We have a, uh, a fun little game we're going to play for you. It's one of our favorite segments called Going Viral. We're going to throw it back to last off season when this video here of you stopping to help somebody change a tire took the internet by storm. And Darius, this turned out to be one of your former teachers. Is that true? Yes, ma'am. Um, it was actually my 10th grade uh, biology teacher. Um, I was on the way uptown and I, I noticed the car and I saw her. I was like, oh, so I stopped and asked what was wrong, and she was like, I got a flat tire. So I was like, oh, I'm from the country. I can I can change that for you. <laughs> I mean, that's something like, I mean, I'm from down south. You know, you stop to help people. And right. I love it. I didn't it. think it was going to do this because, I mean, people do this every single day. But, you know, it just show you what, what kind of guys. Wait, wait, wait. Have. You were heading uptown in your hometown? Hometown, yeah. Okay, you're like uptown. Like, where are you going to see? I'm seeing tall grass. <laughs> how, many, how many people in your hometown? Um, I'd say maybe, maybe 800 to 1,000. Wow. Depends on the day. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe a thousand. I just love how you say I'm from the South. This is what we do. What yes. a gentleman. Oh, yes, ma'am. That's awesome. I love hearing I'm that. I'm from the South, too. That is great. Yes, that sir. is what we do. Yeah, yeah, just be careful. In the South, you wave every time, like, you're in your yard. So yes. guys by you, oh, yeah. wave. Just be careful in New York. And stay oh, yeah, trust wave, me. I, I know. People. Yes. I, I tell them, I say, I say hey when I walk past people. Or yeah. I say thank you, like, when I, they hold the door open for me. They look at me like with this mean look. And I'm like, oh, just, you know, trying to be polite. Thank you? What are you talking about? Yeah. Uh, it's so great to have you here. Thank you so much for no stopping problem. in thank and you. joining us. All right, we're going to take a quick break here. More First Things First after this.